What's up guys? I'm Panda Man, formerly known as Kyle. In today's video, I'm gonna show you one of my workouts that will help you get jacked, explosive, and powerful. I began training back in 1997. And since that time, I've done pretty much all you can do in the gym. I've tried most things, not all things obviously, but damn near everything. Throughout the years, I've experimented. For example, I was doing your CrossFit style workouts way before CrossFit even existed. I learned about training full body, the stress response, Hans Selye, alarm resistance exhaustion. We need to keep in mind before I break this workout down for you that a workout is a stress. You have to apply a stress to the body to get an adaptation. So let's say you're outside using a shovel and you're out there all day and you got fresh little baby hands and you have never used a shovel. Well, what's the stress response? You're gonna develop these calluses, right? You will develop those. Then after a time, it doesn't hurt anymore. If you apply further stress, you rip them up again, have to apply more. So when we're training, we need to keep in mind that if you continue to apply the same stress over and over, you will not get further adaptations. The body doesn't work like that. The body wants homeostasis. It wants to conserve energy. So putting on muscle is a matter of a few things and how we can train that. Now, I believe that we should be training for performance and health and let the cosmetic, the look, follow. Keep in mind, I used to compete in bodybuilding. I did seven shows, count them, seven shows. So I have experience in that realm. I have experience with packing on a lot of muscle. One of my clients the other day asked me, he said, so if you wanted to put on muscle, this is the way you recommend to train? I'm like, that's what I do, man. Take a look at it. Let me take a little swig of my juice here. Always fasting. I'm in my 48 hour fast right now. So when I put this particular workout that you're gonna see together, that I want you to swipe, take, and use, but let me know how you like it. I was sitting there brainstorming the workout. Now here's the thing that is very overlooked with training and workouts, your mental engagement. When I first started out as a young strength coach, I used something that Einstein talked about called combinatory play. Combining different ideas to make something new. Most people don't do this, but you can use this type of thinking and philosophy in any area of life. So you could take that and swipe it and thank me later. With this workout, I got my computer right here so I can kind of go over it with you. I had this idea of contrast. The body likes contrast. Opposites, push-pull, isometric movement. So with this particular contrast set that you'll see me doing here, we did four sets of 30 seconds on each of these exercises. And the contrast was really to get the nervous system ready to go for the brutality that we were about to bring the pain on, okay? The contrast set was an overhead hold. So we did an overhead hold. You'll see me doing it here with dumbbells for time. Really activating the core, obviously hitting some isometrics with the upper back and the shoulders. And then we went right into a paired goblet squat. So a goblet squat hold. Goblet squat you'll see me doing here. We're holding near the bottom, but we were keeping tension on the lower body. So these two isometric holds. The contrast is the high low, the high low. And isometrics, time under tension. Your body likes to uh, respond to training such as that. So time under tension. It was a great warm up, got you going, but it was easy right on the joint, especially as the aging athlete. If you're in your 40s like me, I'm 42. A lot of people think I'm older, but I act a lot younger. Nonetheless, that's how I started this workout. And it was great, it was smooth. A lot of times in a warm up, I'll do something called a physical rehearsal. But you try these, you do the high hold, you do the low hold. Now, by the end of set four, you should be ready to attack what is next. And I'm gonna tell you, what is next gets incrementally harder and harder. This is not for the faint of heart the way I like to train. Now that you're all ready to go and warmed up, let's see what we got next. We had a heavy reverse barbell lunge. Now I've always preferred the reverse lunge to a regular lunge. Now I do regular lunges, I do them as challenge sets. And my challenge set with a regular lunge is typically 135 on my back, 200 yard set which is brutal, it's painful, but it comes down to the mind, which is something that I wanna make a point with. Training to me is more mental than anything. You have to put yourself through workouts like this as we ramp up here that are going to challenge you and see what you're capable of and to give you the repetitions to deal with the demons that are up here in your mind. So heavy reverse barbell lunge, we have four sets of six and then we superset that, went out to the parking lot Jumps, body weight jumps, explode up, throw your arms up as you're coming up. You'll see here, throw them up, land, boom, to five. And then we took off into a 30 yard sprint. So that explosive aspect. As we age, the explosiveness, the power capabilities of the body decline. We want to try to counteract that. So we're talking about that raw, rugged, powerful muscle. This is the type of stuff you have to do. 
We don't sprint enough typically in general, uh, people in general, men in particular, right? Men should be explosive. Men should be hunters, right? They should be able to get out there and get after it or jump. Now, the thing is, most people were never taught actually how to do this if they were not athletes, which is crazy because it should be being taught in every physical education class around the country, but it's not. Four sets of six on the lunge, four by five on the jump, followed by the sprint. So at this point, man, feeling good. Now, what did I do? Did I stay with lower body? Nope. Today's emphasis was lower body, but we're going to finish with that. What I sprinkled in here was some chest. So if you look at how the chest is designed, right, it's designed to adduct, to bring back to the center line of the body. Not necessarily designed for this. That's more triceps you're pressing than anything else. So we did three sets of this superset, and it was a dumbbell fly. Okay, you could actually call these giant sets because they're of the same muscle group if you want to get technical, but a dumbbell fly, only six reps. So it means we went heavy, but I had a three zero X here. And your three zero X, it was three seconds on the way down, as you see, boom, explode up. So really working that negative. Now when we do a fly, you'll see my form here. I like to do, make it like a hybrid. It's almost like a bear hug, not arms straight out to the side where you're gonna tweak your shoulders and be very weak. I modeled what Schwarzenegger did with these and then when Mountain Dog, John Meadows coached me, this is how he had me doing them. Scott Abel, Sam Day, all these brilliant minds. See, I get a lot of people that'll say, oh, that's not a fly, you're not doing it right. It's gotta be like this. And I'm like, these nimwits. They didn't learn from the greats. They haven't applied it. So when you observe it, it might look like a somewhat of a press, but it's not, I assure you. But we want to get into the field. But the three-second negative, really putting it, this is the primary motion for the chest that it flies. And then we did a dip burnout set, so parallel bar dips. Forward lean, you'll see here, as you're doing that, stretch the chest. But Schwarzenegger loved doing these. Obviously, I studied Schwarzenegger a lot as I was coming up. So we would do a burnout set, means as many as you can, like fatigue it. Now, if you want to get super scientific for lack of a better term. Time your rest period. I usually don't time rest periods because I think it's silly most of the time. My belief is the strength and conditioning. When you're ready to go, you should be ready to go. Meaning if you could talk, you should be beginning your next set. But if we're doing like a set still failure or repeated effort, something from like the conjugate style of training, then you could time your rest. Okay, maybe you rest 60 seconds after that giant set, do it again. Let's see how many total dips you can get out of those three sets. Next week, try to beat it. Right, so you're always trying to, to, again, add more stress to the body to get the adaptations that you are after. Next comes the finisher. You're not gonna wanna miss this because this is the big payoff. Now for the finisher, what do we have on the docket? We did a three mile run. All right, we're out in the run portion, three miles. We're going back to squat. If you notice behind me, there's a big chemtrail all over my head, but Reversing the order this week. Workout, finisher, run, squat. Try to keep a good pace. I think we're in a 930 range. Good for us, right? 930 pace. And it's hot and humid here now in Jersey. So we did a three mile run. Get back. So let's say that's about 30 minutes. And then we finished with a three and a half minute set of squats. Yes, I said that. Three and a half minute set of squats. The week prior, we did the squats first, a five minute set, then went on a three mile run. Why do this? Well, it doesn't seem like it makes sense if you're concerned about building muscle. Repetitions on the lower body. This is where the mental game is played. You're going out in the run, then you're not done yet. You gotta come back and you gotta realize, hey, it's time for battle. How am I gonna make it through this three and a half minute set of squats? My legs are already fried from the stuff we've already done and the run. I call these type of things spirit sets. This is where you got to dig in and enhance the spirit, but you dig in. So I'll do a lot of visualization in these sets. When I get to the last minute or so, a lot of times I'll picture Devin, I'll picture Colty, Braxton, Emma, and I'll just picture them smiling at me. So I do a rep for each of them. Now at this point, and I don't know how many reps we did in that three and a half minutes, but I can tell you my eight minutes set of squat, my record was 106 with 220, I believe, which is insane. I can't do that right now, but I built up to that. So this is how you finish. You completely fatigue the body, imp applying a stress that is gonna make you adapt. So if you look at this workout, guys, we pretty much hit everything. We did some nervous system activation. We did some heavy lower with those heavy sets of reverse lunges, which feel great on the knees. We did some explosiveness with your jumping and your sprinting. Then we got in some beach muscles, worked the chest, sprinkled it in, right? There's no reason you can't sprinkle in your favorite body parts. If that's your favorite body part, 
every time you train. And then we finish with, man, let's really fatigue the conditioning aspect in those lower body muscles, the glutes, the thighs, the quads, the hamstrings, all this stuff. But we want to see what we can do, push it to the limit. Now, at the end of this workout, you're going to be fried, and you should be. But that's how you should train. When I hit the weights now, it's usually only three days a week. I do something every day, but three days a week. is You don't have to be in there four, five, six times a week. If you are after developing this strong, lean, muscular type of body, this is what you must be doing. Stuff like this. So I'm going to start making this a series for you guys so you can compile these workouts and make them your own and do them and let me know the feedback. But these things, guys, are highly effective. I've spent 25 years now studying strength and conditioning, applying it. A lot of the stuff is unconventional like everything else I do. This fits right within the beast portion of my Panda Method, fasting, beasting, and then feasting. So I will be getting a feasting video up for you guys soon so you can see how I eat like a savage. I'm the, the envy of many men the way I get to eat. And I stay lean, I stay strong, I stay jacked for myself. That's it. I'm not the biggest guy. I'm not the smallest guy. There are people that can outwork me in the gym, but they're few and far between. I can promise you that. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the Panda Man Official so you don't miss anything that I'm putting out. Click the link down below. I'll pin it in the comments. Get a free workout, a four-day workout I designed. Got a lot of cool things in there. Definitely probably what you're looking for. Click the link below, put your email, you get the workout.